Well, that was a pleasant surprise. The insane support everyone gave from the John and Nancy video came out at me like a fireman's hose. All these questions and comments about how much Jack Stauber affected our lives, a follow-up was definitely in order. Stay tuned till the end of the video where I'll personally be responding to some of said comments. I originally had a much bigger, stupider discussion prepared, but after sitting on it for a while it felt pretty unnecessary. You're here because you're searching for subtext, a different perspective to this already enigmatic song. And that's what I'm here today to give you, plain and simple. Are you ready? Let's begin. What we already know is the song John and Nancy is named after a husband and wife who worked at a shop at Rossi's pop-up marketplace. If this is still new to you, this is not in fact a half-baked theory. It's true. Please refer back to the first video to get back up to speed. The lyrics to this song, however, seem to have nothing to do with John, Nancy, or Rossi's. But after some careful analysis, I'm confident I know the true meaning behind this song. Probably. I had a dream last night. Had a dream last night. You died from my head around it. These lines allude to something sinister right away, leading people to believe this song is about a deadly real-life event. But there's a detail that a majority of people seem to ignore, a detail that surrounds the very theme of the song. This song is about a dream. Of course, you could still argue the song is being sung from the perspective of somebody who witnessed a real-life death, but when you take the rest of the lyrics into account, that argument starts to get messy. You might not buy this right away, but just keep that dream theme in the back of your mind for a minute and stay with me for a while. These lines have been especially misconstrued by real-life events, but all you have to do is think back to that theme and look at these lines again. Lights up, 45, only remember the day I saw you alive. This is a literal interpretation of what the singer does after they've awoken from their bad dream. They turn on the lights. They put on a sentimental piece of music in the form of a 45 RPM vinyl record, and they try their best to purge the image of death from their head. Never Leave These Eyes isn't just a simple exclamation, it's a clear plea to somebody who we can assume is still alive. I hope you're taking notes because this will be important later. I This line about an obituary has been pretty intensely argued about in terms of connecting the song with a real-life death and separating the identity of the singer from Jack to somebody else. But once again, nobody seems to pick up on the most important detail. If it saw the light of my life, it wouldn't help. Light has already been used as an analogy for waking up, which would mean the obituary would simply be part of the dream. You could easily call that a coincidence. However, Jack has gone on record saying his words are chosen very carefully. There are several examples of notable reoccurring terms or motifs that appear across the same song and sometimes even across multiple songs in Jack's library. Body parts, for instance, are a hugely reoccurring subject in High Low and later on in Micropop. The point I'm trying to make is you shouldn't write something off as a coincidence when it comes to Jack. Alright, now, with everything I've presented over these two videos, I think I've done a pretty good job of disproving the song is about a murder or stranger things, so there can only be one other clear explanation. This song is recounting a memory from Jack Stauber's past. A memory of a dream so haunting, it traumatized him. I understand if you still think this is hard to swallow, but let me try putting this into perspective. 
Have you ever had a dream that felt so vivid and lifelike? When you wake up, you have a brief moment of confusion, like, wait, that didn't happen. Or just as well, have you ever done something in your waking life and feel a memory from a recent dream reawaken? Like some kind of twisted deja vu. Now, imagine for a minute you've dreamt one of those vivid lifelike dreams, indistinguishable from reality, and you witness somebody you know, someone you really care about, get killed. Some of you may have already had a dream like this and know from experience just how frightening it can be. You may be thinking, well, whatever, dreams aren't real, and you'd be right, but that's exactly what this song is about. Self-reflection. Why, indeed. Dreams are molded from memories, and the way our minds weave them says a lot about ourselves. What emotions could cause a mind to create such a morbid scenario? That's exactly what Jack is contemplating in this song. There's just one last piece of the puzzle that's missing. If there truly are no coincidences in Jack's work, where do John and Nancy fit into this? What about Rossi's? There has to be some kind of connection, right? For the longest time, this has been my biggest block to chisel. What is it about this flea market that's so important to this song? Maybe the person Jack dreamt about was John or Nancy? But that can't be right. When I first asked Nancy about Jack, she didn't even recognize his name, meaning they can't be more than acquaintances at best. Sure, they've helped Jack a great deal, but the emotion in this song seems to imply a deeper relationship with this mystery individual. Could the dark place mentioned in the song be referring to Rossi's? It's possible, but that'd be too easy. I had long given up on this frustrating riddle, but then one morning, as if my prayers had been answered, a winged angel by the name of Arya Pickles bestowed upon me an incredible breakthrough. A song by Jack that mentions Rossi's? How have I not heard of this before now? There has to be some kind of mistake, right? How late in the day am I good to get away with making one more cup of coffee and a hundred more mistakes or so? I'll meet you in the kitchen and then we can laugh at terrible things are always happening and but nobody wants to hold you. My dumb heart is overflowing with all that you name and I'm just out when I'm lonely, baby. I I don't believe it. It all makes perfect sense now. Rossi's is somewhere he visited with someone he loved. It's still just a guess, but the person Jack is singing to in this song may very well be the same person he's singing about in John and Nancy. I can't think of a more plausible theory. To think this short, minute-long song posted on Jack's Tumblr in 2017 had a shout-out to Rossi's, and it was hiding in plain sight this whole time. After two long years of everyone speculating and chasing after a deeper meaning to the song, the truth couldn't have been simpler. And I feel so happy to have had it been such an important part of my life. Well, I think I've covered just about every aspect of the song I possibly can. I don't think this new theory will be easy to refute either, but I'm eager to hear your input nonetheless. There may yet be more to discover, but just Please don't try to bother Jack about any of this. There's a reason he tries to keep everything hidden, and there are definitely some things we shouldn't know about. 
let's just revel together in this great big pool of mystery and see what we can come up with. Speaking of which, let's answer some comments. Zoom on. This is an awesome video, and I think it's really fascinating, but I can also see some of Jack's less socially aware fans staking out the place just to try to find him. So while this was interesting and had a great reasoning behind it, I really do worry about what the possible future implications might be. And this is a very good comment, and it's something I thought about at great length before I made the first John and Nancy video. I was worried about revealing too much. There were actually a few things that I cut from the video out of respect for Jack's privacy. Seeing as he may not be living in Pittsburgh anymore, I doubt he'd be visiting Rossi's again anytime soon. I've been going there for several years now, and I haven't even bumped into him once. I was more so worried about the state of Rossi's, and more importantly, Nancy, after they were thrust into the mainstream. I visited Nancy again recently, and everything seemed like business as usual, so I don't think I shook the place too hard. But if you are one of those people who go there with the intention of asking Nancy about Jack, I feel it's extremely important to reiterate, she doesn't actually know anything about him. So not only are you going to be disappointed, but you're going to look very weird. I may not be at my best, but at least I never made a Stranger Things comment on the John and Nancy video. I still don't understand how the Stranger Things thing became so popular with the song. Dedicating a song to a character from a current mainstream television show might be the least Stowbury thing I can think of. Isn't this character named Jonathan? And do they ever refer to him as John? And if for a minute we assume the song is about Stranger Things, wouldn't you spell his name J-O-N instead of J-O-H-N? I don't really watch Stranger Things, so I don't know what I'm talking about. This is a really good video I've been a fan around since you have Do You Think He'll Perform Again After the Pandemic? I think that was a question. In regards to Jack making live appearances again, I sure would love to see him go wild again with his Rex Theater setup. Uh, although his last show was about two years ago now, and he hasn't done anything live since then as far as I know. For good reason, I'm sure. Jack is a performer at heart, so I think we'll see him live again sometime soon. Is Jack racist? Hmm. Every copy of Hilo is personalized. Jack Stauber Iceberg when? I actually considered doing one of these while it was still the hot thing, but I decided against it for fear of spotlighting Jack's personal life again in a way that he might not appreciate. I would recommend Zacky and Juice if you haven't heard of them before. It's very underrated stuff considering Jack was a part of it. According to the Jack Stauber wiki, the rest of Zacky don't even know what most of their lyrics are because Jack won't tell them. <laughs> Good to know that's been a constant over all these years. More videos, man? I'm flattered you want to see more from me. And rest assured, I've got lots more things in the works. Here's a few short preview clips of some stuff I'm working on. Clear. Winner of this pot gets to rim Tyler. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. And there you go. You've got all that to look forward to now, and uh, I'm very sorry. And that's all I've got for this video. Till next time, bye now. <laughs> Please refer back to the first video to get back up as, uh, get back up the. <coughs> These lines have been especially misconstrued by real life of, uh, uh, <laughs> oh God. They put on a sentimental piece of music in the form of an. F uh, <laughs> ah!